again, uh, doing some indifference of angle formulas, this time using the sine. I've got the sine of A plus B and the sine of A minus B, and these are their respective formulas. You can go ahead and read them. Basically, A and B stand for angles. Uh, you can use alpha and beta if you want to. You can use X and Y if you wanted to, but A and B seem to be the easiest. Anyway, so I've got this problem here where it says the sine of 15 degrees. And I don't know what the sine of 15 degrees is off the top of my head, but I can use one of these two formulas in order to figure out what the sine of 15 degrees is. And I suppose the most artful way of doing it is uh, using the second formula. Uh, and the way that I say that is very simple. Uh, sine of 15 degrees is actually, you got to think of two numbers that you know uh, the sine of that equal 15. And the easiest one is 60 subtracted by 45 degrees. 60 degrees subtracted by 45 degrees. You can use a lot of other ones too, but that's the easiest one. So the sine of 15 degrees, the same thing as the sine of 60 degrees, oops, that's a 45 degrees. 60 minus 45 is 15 degrees. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking, okay, that's a subtraction of two angle or difference of angle formulas. I'm like, okay, I can do this. That's the sine of A cosine of B. So it's the sine of 60 cosine of 45. Subtracted by cosine of the first one times the sine of the second one. And the sine of the second one is 45. Now, what's really cool is you look at this and you see the sine of 15 degrees. Go ahead and plug it into your calculator to see what it equals. It's going to give you some sort of decimal. Do the sine of 60 degrees, um, hopefully in your head, hopefully you memorize everything. It's root 3 over 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Subtracted by the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half, and times the sine of 45 degrees, which is root 2 over 2. That's root 6 over 4. Subtract by root 2 over 4. The denominators are the same, but I can't really combine the numerators. It's just root 6. Subtract by root 2 over 4. Which, coincidentally enough, was the same answer as, well, sine of 15 degrees is root 6 minus 2 over 4. But there's a reason why I actually picked that, because on a previous lesson we did the cosine of 75 degrees. And that answer came out to root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Oh, how did you know that? Ah, I didn't really take much brains, but I'll show you how I did it. The cosine is the co-function of the sine, and 15, 15 degrees complementary angle is 75. If you're working with co-functions and you're working with complementary angles, you know, 15 and 75 is complementary because it adds up to be 90. If this were 10 and this were 80, then those answers would be the same because they're complementary. I mean, it's really cool. You can also use this in the abstract case where you do, like, you know, 3 theta minus theta and then you figure it out. But we already did that with the cosine when it came to the sum and difference of angle formulas, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse down there. But basically what I'm trying to say is this. If you can split something up, let's say you got, you know, like 4 theta, you can technically split that into 2 theta plus 2 theta, but that also starts to get into double angle formulas too. And then you can split into, you know, sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, plus cosine of 2 theta, sine of 2 theta, and so on and so forth. These formulas are really quite cool and actually very useful. Um, not necessarily so much with identities. Teachers usually use them more to figure out these angles right here, you know, 15 degrees, 75, well, actually, you know, with identities it is true too. But uh, with that said, I hope you found that helpful. Have a good day for now.